Get your hands on a gym and tonic GNT box. Enter the promo code BLACKINK for an exclusive 10% discount on your order. Gym and tonic, sustainable urban gin. Thank you for joining us on Black Ink Cinema podcast. Hey, what's going on? It's a pleasure to have you on. Before we get into your very cool choice of film that you chose, I recently saw you on Don't Hate the Players. Hey, yes. I'm a big fan of uh, hip hop, so I, I indulge in that show and almost play along like I'm on the panel, which I'm Okay. Not. <laughs> <laughs> I think we did all you, do that. Did you enjoy it? It was fun. I, I used to be the warm up for it. Oh, um, cool. In season one and season two. Mm. I did the whole of season one. Season two, I'll be honest, any, any entertainer doesn't like to do warm up as the, their career. It's one of those ones where you're looking at the panel going, I wish I was on there. Yeah, of course. But because I said yes to it. Yeah. I like, it was work, needed the money a couple of years yes. ago, saving up for a new place and stuff. And I'm like, you know what, let mm. me do it. But I realized how soul crushing it was because everybody that was on the panel during season one were other people I'm affiliated with, I work with. I was touring at the time, yeah. one of my tours, and a couple of people on the panels were on my own tour. And I'm like, I'm positioning myself incorrectly. So when I went and did season three, yeah. it was just, it was a blessing that mm. they asked me to come and do it. And it was just so fun to do. But it was, mm. it was kind of a, kind of a, like, a confirmation of my own self-affirmations of wanting to name what my price was, which was, I yeah. don't want to warm up anymore. I want to be on the panel. And what I got, whatever I got to do to work to get to that, I'll do. So I was, yeah. it was, it was ha- I was happy about it. Well done to you. I know how difficult it is, especially in those circumstances, you kind of think you should be grateful for the opportunity, but at the same time, you know your worth. So exactly. it's about weighing up those two. So it was good to see you on there. And so you've got a lockdown podcast, No Escaping This. So you're going to be the first person on the public platform I've said this to you. The No Escaping okay. This podcast mm-hmm. uh, started before lockdown. Right. Um, when I got into the first lockdown, I did it every day. It got exhausting, but the first lockdown was a lot easier to do because of... Um, because it was new, it was exciting. You could still go outside. You, it was. You didn't know. You just didn't know what was. Yeah. Happening. Even though we knew that we were locked down, there were still parts of us going, "What does that mean?" Oh, Joe Wicks, he's got a. Let's do fitness all together. It almost unified us in a way that we never realised we could, because of the world saying stop. But this time round, because the yeah. weather's colder, because um, it feels like we're being restricted after being restricted before, it's mm. been a bit harder. And I made a decision before this lockdown, the second one, that I was going to kill the podcast um, to start a new one. No, no, it's just start a new one. That podcast was the first one I ever did. Um, And I want to start a new one now that I've had over two years of experience in podcasting Mm. and um, also helping other people do their podcasts that's come to my studio to record. So I said, I know what I want to do now. Uh, this one I'm in now is in Acton, North Acton. Um, Pre your Instagram, I did love your plantain, plantain song because I'm a lover of plantain as well. I know there's going to be I a war. Don't know what I plantain is. It. I'm sorry, I've never heard of plantain. Oh lord! Uh, what are we talking about? It sounds familiar. It sounds like this thing I eat called plantain. But it sounds plantain? like that. Yeah, it sounds like that. It could be that as well. Um, big fan. Enjoyed that song. Thank you. I'm, in all honesty, I think you should just drop it because I'm sure <laughs> like it will do well. Like people will buy that, no doubt. Do you know what? Maybe, maybe. It, it, I don't know. I might do a Don't Christmas block your blessings. Too. Don't block your blessings. Just do you. Well, I, we just got an no. idea. We just got an idea. <laughs> I might, I might do a Christmas planting collection. <laughs> it was Christmas towels about planting. planting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Rachel, you're getting, the, you're getting in on the you're getting the royalties. You're getting in on the royalties. <laughs> At least if I get a little bit, I'll be fine. I'll be fine. No I'll problem. No problem. Um, so, of course, this year has been crazy for everyone. Yeah. Have you got anything going on at the moment? TV, stand-up, your own shows, anywhere? So, uh, my, my heaviest month, my heaviest period of time for TV was um, August, September, October. There was stuff mm. prepared for November. Yeah. The problem was is that we all had to stop. So, things got pushed mm-hmm. back. Mm-hmm. Um, I still got I still got to do a few projects I was doing with Comedy Central um, with BBC mm-hmm. and um, also the ones that we recorded beforehand yeah right right now it's been I kind of scheduled it that November hopefully I wouldn't be doing much recording because mm-hmm. I wanted to move this location November comes we're in lockdown 
Um, everything that I've been doing this month so far has been voiceover work, radio, um, online performances, or preparing mm-hmm. for this Christmas performances. So it's not necessarily TV stuff that is coming up. That I think the only things that are coming up for TV is things we've already recorded that will be coming out next year, but they're small sketch yeah. projects that mm. we've done with, like I said, Comedy Central. Yeah. Um, it's mainly stage, trying to get ourselves back onto stage because yeah. as much as we're in a lockdown and we're not really supposed to do stage during lockdown, the, you can't take away the itch. We all, as, mm. as a comedian, I want to get back on stage and perform. Of course. So yeah. it's just waiting for um, that opportunity to happen. And do you know what? In time it will, I guess. Just mm. got to wait for it to happen, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Mm. And uh, I see you sipping on some juice there. What is uh, What are you drinking? I've just got my Lucozade, but you're drinking the good stuff. Okay, so there is a uh, there is a, a company called Bamboo Rum. Shout out to Bamboo Rum, who mm-hmm. um, show Love a lot rum. of support to me and my events that I do. Mm-hmm. Whilst, uh, whilst right now I'm not drinking Bamboo, I've also got other rum in here mm-hmm. that was given to me when I hosted Carnival, um, the nice. live stream that Carnival did. Yeah. And a lot of them were like, their whole mission was, Ori, we know you like Bamboo Rum. We're going to see if you can try some of this rum. And, yeah. and they tried to convert me. Whether, <laughs> whether that happens or not, we'll have to see. But um, one I've got here, which is uh, the Duckley Share, which is a Caribbean rum of Jamaica and Barbadian uh, descent. Lovely. And I've got a little sample taster. I've got the whole bottle at home, but a sample taster. This is Equiano rum. It's really, really nice. It's this one I'm drinking today. And they're all still trying to convert me from this to bar- from. <laughs> From bamboo to these rums, so we'll see what happens. We'll see. We're actually sponsored by a gin company, uh, Jim and Tonic. Yeah, okay. and they've got a really good variation, so we might have to send you one as well. Yay! Get you on that, hey. <laughs> get you on that as mm. well. Um, so, do you want to share your socials with the people so they can follow you and keep up to date? My social media is at Ori A U R I E Styler S T Y L A uh, on all platforms. You'll find me that way. Oh, lovely. Nice and simple. That's what I like to see. So we're here to celebrate all things black cinema and you chose Soul Men, starring yeah. the great late Bernie Mac and yeah, Samuel yeah. Jackson. Mm-hmm. Um, why did you choose this film? Because everybody else chose other films that I wanted to choose, <laughs> didn't it? Everybody <laughs> else. The white people. There was, um, oh, what other films did I choose? I, I got to get them out of my mind because I saw the list. I was like... Other people from previous series have choose other films that I would like to discuss. The Wood, right. I think someone chose that. Was oh, not someone happy. hasn't chosen The Wood. You could have chosen The Wood. It's really awkward. <laughs> it's really awkward. You just presumed Wait. that someone chose The Wood. No. I thought that I thought that I thought The Wood was already picked. No. Never mind. Never mind. There was a couple others. There was one smart one I thought I had. Let me check my messages. While I'm on here, there was one, I had one. One I was thinking, no one ain't picked this film. Yeah, yeah. wait until wait until they see me now. I was like, because <laughs> yeah. Solomon like hovers under the radar. It's not one of those films that comes to the forefront when I it's, think about black cinema or even Sam J or Bernie Mac. So you, yeah, it's, quite... it's not a big film. Uh, mm. It wasn't one of the biggest in their catalog. Definitely. Um, the sad thing was, is Bernie was the last one Bernie did before he died, and Isaac Hayes did before they died as well. And yeah, well. yeah, I think. No, go on, go on. Old Dogs was the one, the last one to drop, and it dropped after he died. Yes, wait. But it was just it wasn't he wasn't the main character in that. So yeah, this was the one he done the main feature. Okay, mm. so watching watching this film uh, as a big big Bernie fan when I was growing yeah. up. Um, his his very unique way of delivering comedy. Mm. It was very him. It was very Bernie centric, and he was always told yeah. that because of his vernacular and his his cadence that he would never get super far in comedy, and mm. not comedy, sorry, in acting. But yet mm. he was able to do films like Oceans Eleven, Twelve, and Thirteen. He was able yeah. to do Transformers just for a cameo bit. I love so him in Transformers is one of my favourite characters. I know it's a small bit, it's but I absolutely bit, but Bobby Bolivia. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's poignant because it's just so him. good. Yeah. yeah. And it was sad that that this film felt like one of the roles that he would be seen as uh, a larger star. Mm. And sadly enough, I mean at the end of the film, you can see a tribute done to him. So they he died whilst the film was in post-production. 
Yeah. So you can see the tribute was done to him and to Isaac Hayes. But if you watch yeah. the film, uh, even though Samuel is, is like the veteran actor in the movie, he still seems just by being Bernie. Mm. Uh, Bernie being himself, there's a scene that they have in there which was so amazing because Bernie kind of just took over in that scene. It was when he... It's when uh, he goes to Samuel L. Jackson's house in the middle of the ghetto and yeah. tries to get him to join, to, jo- to, link, to make their team, their, their band, come back. Link, yeah. come back. And the interaction is like five minutes of pure laughter because yeah. he's <laughs> trying to tell Samuel L. Jackson, who's a cantankerous ex-singer and performer, Mm. who doesn't want to go on the road again with this guy. And you've mm. got this optimistic ex-singer performer in Bernie who has actually had a better life than Samuel post yeah. his career in music, going, mm. let's get on the road again. And Samuel just being cantankerous. But then you see their almost old, old feud that they had growing up coming out. It really it contextualizes their relationship within mm. five minutes. And it is hilarious from the top to the bottom. It's, it goes under the radar. Yeah, yeah, it does go under the radar. You're right. Yeah. And it's such a weird combo. You just, yeah. whoever decided to put the two together, it's like hilarious. There's never been so much swearing in one film. Like, <laughs> the film. it's like, <laughs> motherfucker, every two minutes. Every, every two minutes. Film. Like, you can't have Bernie in there and he doesn't say it. That's <laughs> the thing. It's just how he says it is the best. Yeah, it's it's almost not insulting when he says it, though. It's just yeah, like, yeah. it's quite nice. <laughs> I've never heard it described as nice, but nice. I do agree yeah. with you. I do agree, it's yeah. Comical. Um, so obviously the film is directed by Malcolm D. Lee, uh, who also directed The Best Man and yes. Girls Trip. Where do you think this fits? I, I'll be honest, I haven't seen Girls Trip, so um I can't tell no, you if it's any No, Rory, or work. we're not gonna skip over this. We're not, we're not, I'm not gonna allow this. You, you can you can tell me, you can lean in. Go on, let's go. Talk, oh, tell me why I should see it. How have you like lived it. without seeing a film with Jada Pinkett, Queen Latifah, Tiffany Haddish, what Regina Hall? Yes. Like, they, it's honestly... It's Only two of them appeal to me in a comedy film. Ooh, that's... Only savvy. two. Only two of them appeal to me in a comedy film. Uh, who, who are those two? Regina Hall and yeah, Queen amazing. Latifah. You don't, you're not a fan of Tiffany. It's not that I'm not a fan of Tiffany. Um, yeah. When I see Tiffany do, I heard that in this film she was amazing. She stood I out. Think, which is, this, I think that's the thing. I think she actually made this movie for me. I'd never heard of her before this. I did, never came across my radar. This okay. was my first introduction to her. And honestly, she made me laugh out loud, like the ugly laugh. Like her, like she yeah, was yeah. so funny. It was so refreshing. Um, yes, but, but. No, no, it's fine. So for me, uh, I, it's the. Uh, there's no way I can say I don't like Tiffany. I think Tiffany's great, but I like when characters like Tiffany doing the, the hey stuff. Yeah, that's is Tiffany. Very, is very Tiffany. Yeah. I actually loved her in uh, the film that she did with Kevin, where she had to bring it back a little bit. And okay, yeah. you could see more of the humour in the content mm-hmm. as opposed to it being the, the wild stuff the, all the, the time. Crazy. Yeah. And I think when I see that with Regina Hall, <clears throat> with Regina Hall, yeah, with Regina Hall, and with um, Queen Latifah, yeah. because it's not the theatrics in the movie that you would not see in real life anyway on a girl's trip. You wouldn't yeah. see a bunch of girls just being like that. With Queen mm-hmm. Latifah and with uh, Regina Hall, there's something about them too, especially Regina. When you yes. watch them in movies, when Regina has like a meltdown, that's that me. That's <laughs> the funniest thing that I've seen. I, when it, that's one of the funniest things I see in a lot of black movies that mm. have Regina in there is that she she's this cute kind of high pitched voice woman who's very almost scared at a lot of things and all of a sudden she has these crazy meltdowns. Yeah, I, for her that appeals to me than than the kind of the character that Tiffany would play in the film. I got mm. to see some clips and I think because as well it's um it's a it's a film that is definitely everyone can watch but it was more so the the interactions that women would have on a girls trip or could have on a girl's trip, the topics, the conversations. Mm-hmm. There was a part of me that was going, this is probably funny, but I'm going to be like the outsider watching this with the view of, is that what you lot think of men? Is that how... And Do you not think that's just a bit like, think that I, just yeah, because it's a girl's trip and it's a bunch of... I watch male films all the time and I'm able to relate and um, see it from their point of view and enjoy it. See, if there are... Like I, Hangover, I, I, for example... 
See, again, hangover is like the, the opposite, where it's yeah. like the men's version of girls' trip. But I felt hangover was too man-centric, where it was I relying on all the men. I, it's not, like I said, I've not seen girls' trip. Hangover I have seen, but I, what, when I watched hangover, I kept thinking it's a, it's a lot of like dick jokes in here. There's a lot of <laughs> men jokes that I'm like, come on, man. There's, there's, come on, we could, do, we could do more than this. And I don't know, maybe, I'll tell you what kind of comedy I like, which, which, is, which will maybe give you a rough idea. I love, like, I religiously watch once a year the entire box set of Frasier. Oh, I love Frasier, yes. So like, I used to watch that every morning, like when it comes on Channel Four, like just time that shit and and watch there it. There you before. go. Yeah. So I think I think the I think when I know the joke, when I know the noise is the punchline or the mm-hmm. wackiness is the punchline, there's a part of me going, okay, you strip the wackiness away. I want to what? Let me let me see the joke. Yes. Then I'd enjoy it. It's a really. Mm-hmm. Do, you, do you remember watching um, Twenty Two Jump Street? Yes. That scene when he finds out that. The, the Ice Cube's daughter is dating is dating uh, one of the two guys, uh, dating Jonah yeah. Hill. Yeah, the yeah, whole yeah. Build, The build-up to that scene where it starts to click, where he figures out that's what's happened. And then Channing Tatum goes absolutely skits around the whole room about it. For me, it was the, it was the build-up throughout the whole movie getting to that point that made me go, that is really well written. And I, mm-hmm. guess, that, I guess for me... Um, I don't know. I just haven't with Girls Trip. Something about it just hadn't drawn me in. I'll probably watch it. Can I, I just I, set I you that as homework? Like I'll watch. Me. All right, I'll, I'll set it as homework. I'll yes. watch it. I watch. I really appreciate and, that. And I don't know. It's, and I don't, you should tell me if I'm wrong in saying this. I can't picture Jada doing comedy. I, I just think I don't know where everyone is getting on Jada. Like she's. She's funny in a way where, like, her character in this is very rigid and straight, and oh, very so like. It sounds like it sounds like what I would expect her to yeah. be able to act. But then there's a part where you know there's a few comical scenes that she has, and she executes them well. Like, I I enjoyed it. Jada. Yes. Ma- yes. Maybe I'm wrong. I think of like set it off. I think of yes, say it, yeah. I think yeah. of the I think of Matrix. <clears throat> when I think of Jada, yes. it's it's those kind of long brooding stares that you can see the emotion in her eyes. I'm like, wow, she hit that drama tone nicely. Yeah, then you put her yeah. in a comedy, I'm like, Jada, do you but see what I mean? Was, it, her early on career when she was in that sitcom, which was quite comedy-esque anyway, I think people forget that. She was in a sitcom, I, I, sorry, forgive me, I can't remember the name of it. No, I'm, um, gonna, I'm, 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 I'm typing it up as we speak. <laughs> I'm sure she was, and it was... Um, a different world? Yeah. That wasn't serious drama. Okay. But she was part of an ensemble cast, I guess, in that, that made you go, every, like, all right, it's like, um, what, oh, what's Zoe Kravitz's mum called again? <clears throat> Lisa Bonet would never strike me as a woman who can do comedy, but yet she was in the Cosby show for many, many years. And that was a, com- that was a sitcom of some sort. Yeah, I, 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 I hear you. I and hear I see you. Jada like that. Jada's somebody who's you know, on, on think- her own. Yeah. We should just watch. I need you to watch this film and then. Really? Is it really yeah. worth me? It is. Okay. It, it, it really is. It really is. I heard there was something to do with a uh, <laughs> a fruit that people were talking about. See, you're like, see, you're, yeah. What was the fruit? It was about. It was, the, it was, yeah. It was something sexual to do with a fruit. Yeah. Yeah. And that was Jada's scene and it was great. It was hilarious. But was it hilarious because she was the one showing you how to do it or how awkward she was at doing it? Everything. Mm-hmm. Okay. Everything. All right. I'll everything. try. I'll, I'll try and see it. But remember, if I, I, if I didn't like Hangover as much, and it's like the female Hangover. Hangover was okay. If I didn't like it as much, and it's like the female Hangover, then I, I feel like it's going to be that humor. It's, it's. I just need you to watch it. All right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll try it. I'll and then it it's informed. Track. Then we can have informed argument of why you don't like it, or you do. Yeah, All right. I bet you Regina's going to be the one in there that I'm going to love the most with, with her. 100%. Oh, we, okay, cool. All right, we'll see. Like, and, and, uh, and Queen, because I love Queen. Um, so Queen can't do, she can't do wrong at all for me. There's, for you, a comedy, there's times where I teared up and I was like, why am I feeling emotional? This is really sad of me. But um, Queen can do no wrong. In Beauty Shop, even though that film wasn't the greatest, Queen Latifah brought heart to it. In Barbershop 2, yeah. there's a certain 
sexiness in her in a one tone delivery until she starts to get a bit more in character in in She's just sweet. right She's in mm. just right. There's something yeah. about her that is not like forcibly trying to be funny, but yes. she is just a lovable, funny person. I think there's something within that, which is like, it's not being forced that I'm like, I want to, I, I, I'll give it a go. I'll, tr- I'll yeah. give it a go because of the queen and because of Regina, okay. right? With Tiffany, I know she's funny. I think Tiffany's mm-hmm. hilarious when it's not very, like in your face. all Slaps the way, face. Tiffany. Yeah, like mm. like like I said in that film. Is it the, the one with Kevin? Feature, that yeah. for me, anything I've seen her in, that's been my favorite one of her mm. because it's been her being Tiffany with the things she would say and do. But it's been it's not been so. Back a bit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's not been so in, high in your face. Yes. So. Um, so one of your famous comedy routines is the garage skank. Uh, is this one of the reasons why you picked this film because of the music and the comedy aspect? Mm. I, if I'm honest, the music in the film is cool, but it's not the music that draws me to the film. It's the it's the chemistry between uh, between Sam Samuel Jackson and Bernie Mac. Yeah, and the humour that comes from it. There's some slapsticky humour in there, which I'm like, oh, come on now. But there was still it's the it's Bernie's ability to ad lib, and Samuel L. Jackson is there's a dramatic side to him that even in a comedy film like this that comes out mm. that I really love to watch and appreciate. Sam's always going to be great. And anything, anything Sam does, he's never bad. He's mm-hmm. always Sam or amazing. So <laughs> I think there's something, and because it, as a comedian, it's great to see someone like Bernie Mac get the opportunity to not just be one of the characters mm. in the movie, but to be what the like top billing. I think the last time we had a billing that high in a film that was a large film or one that would, would have potentially been considered as mainstream was when he was um, in Guess Who. Mm. Uh, he was the father, but wasn't it... Who was the... Was it Ashton Kutcher? And, yeah, Zoe Zaldana and Ashton, Ashton Kutcher. Ashton Kutcher, yeah, of course. Mm. So Ashton Kutcher definitely got top billing in that film. Bernie mm. Mac got second billing. Mm. Even Zoe Saldana at that time wasn't as known as she is now after she mm. did Avatar and, and Star Trek. Yeah. But it was still an Ashton Kutcher film and then Bernie was almost the antagonist of that film. So he was second billing. In mm. Soul Men, he got equal billing with Samuel L. Jackson. And mm. it was nice as a comedian to see someone who you know is very good at, doing, at delivering comedy as well as delivering drama. Mm get a film where you go, whether it blows up or not, it's still the film that he's got top billing in, get his opportunity to, to move. Yeah. And it was, I think that for me was what it was. As a comedian, you always want to see when someone you know who has done either comedy, comedy writing, performances, get that top billing. Whether it's someone that's from your area, someone that's from your city, or somebody that's within the same field that you also are in. Yeah. And we've seen how long he's been at it and, you know, for him to get that opportunity was quite nice. And yeah. I think everyone kind of celebrated in that. And then it being one of his last films as well, was just like, you know, bittersweet all at the same time. Did you ever see the outtakes or the, the after credit bits with him? No, I, I didn't. I can imagine they would be absolutely hilarious. So one, one thing he does, which um, I, I wholeheartedly, not only do I like do when I can, but it's something that I, I think is the best thing you can do as an entertainer of some sort when you have other people that are there around you. Um, when they're in between takes, there isn't someone keeping the crowd warm. Bernie goes to the microphone when they move cameras around and whatsoever, and he basically does comedy for all the people in the audience. So whilst, oh. whilst um, I've done movies before where between takes, it's you've got to go back backstage to greet to to your trailer or whatever it is that you're doing Bernie said no 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 no. there's an audience here I'm gonna go and have some fun to the point where directors and, and assistant directors will come up to him and say all right we're ready to shoot the next scene and he's like well, I'm not finished and he carry on <laughs> performing for that crowd that were there just to just to stop them from um just to stop them from feeling like you are the crowd I yeah. am the act and also you're waiting on me and, mm. I've, and I've got a friend who's in that movie as well who's told me stories about oh. just what Bernie was like in that film. Um, yeah. Bernie and Sam Jackson, actually, um, 
like having to work with him and like the stories that I hear from this guy yeah. is like, you know what? I got so much time and respect for these people, for, for mm. what he does. And I guess that's why he was so loved by so many. Yeah. You've never, I've literally never heard a bad word said about uh, Bernie ever. Exactly. So that's exactly. testament to his character for sure. Yeah. Um, so what did you think about uh, Sam J and Bernie Mac singing? I, I think it sounded like two old men who enjoy a song or two that don't really know how to hit all the notes. Um, you had John Legend in there. You, you put them next to John Legend. You're not going to be able to out On top of that. Yeah, exactly. it was... That was a comical part. I felt like they did that, obviously, intentionally. It was... Uh, you have someone like John Legend and then they're the backup. And then they angry yeah. as well. He went off on his own to kind of pursue his uh, solo career. But it was like, mm, you were never on his level. If, you, My, if you're John Legend, take John Legend out of real life and just see the ability John Legend would have had in that film. Of course he's going to go solo. Yeah, exactly. Of course. Um, it was kind of like, for me though, I was watching My Uncles Be Sexy and it was a very awkward <laughs> experience. Like, I don't, don't want to see My Uncles do all of that like it was the whining on the stage you know Rachel, to come it. here no oh you have to dance with Onka yeah. ah, <laughs> can you oh. feel it can you oh. feel it hey <laughs> and you just saw them like relaxing more and more as the film went on and yeah. getting into the groove and uh yeah I, I did love the whole soul music aspect of it mm. did you have any songs that stood out? I know you were saying the music wasn't the biggest part for you, but... There's Boogie Ain't Nothing But The Get Down. There's... Oh, you know the songs. <laughs> there's um, <laughs> I'm Your Puppet. Are you into soul music in general? I, I don't mind soul so music, yeah. but for me, um, I'm actually into movie soundtracks more than anything else. Oh, I love movie soundtracks. That is my jam. So, so for me, when I hear songs in a movie, even if it is based on real music, mm -hmm. like... If uh, like Into the Spider-Verse was made up of music predominantly that was actual songs from young artists, the music and how they relate to the, um, to the movie mm -hmm. and why that selection of music is chosen is almost an art form that I, I admire so much. Mm. So for me, that was one of the things that, about this movie that I like. Like they had songs like a, I Got Boogie For You, Just Dropped In, Memphis Train, they did that I'm Your Puppet and stuff like that. It was, it's not, it was very soulful stuff that was really nice. And it characterized them very well because even though they were very cantankerous, it, it was almost, you could see the generation above me, what they enjoyed about music around that time. It was very wholesome. It was very lovey-dovey music that they would have. It wouldn't be like, it would go, pull my strings if you want me to move, I'm your puppet, <laughs> yeah. right? Which is very different uh, from, um, you know, the, you know, yeah, I mean, uh, pussy smell like, like tastes like macaroni and cheese or something like that or sound like. Yes. A, okay. <laughs> that was, whap. I don't know, where those lyrics from? Wap. That's wap. <laughs> those are not the lyrics from wap. <laughs> there is a line in wap about the, f the, the, the f vagina. Okay. Sounding like macaroni and cheese. <laughs> You really listened to this track. <laughs> it was number I mean, one in the charts. Everybody really I, listened to this chat, track. I mean, it yeah. sounded, and I can I just say it, I've said this on the stage. Mm. If, if you ever compare yourself to macaroni and cheese, you need to see someone. <laughs> the, the, the texture and consistency that macaroni and cheese has is so sticky. You don't want to <laughs> sound like that. Do you know what kind of dehydration you have to have to? Sound like uh, macaroni and cheese. I'm gonna make my lashes come off. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> I mean, listen, that's how I. I <laughs> <laughs> that is uh, not involved. That is between her and her wap. I uh, and <laughs> a gynecologist. Anyway, carry on. Yeah, that's between them. Not I'm not involved with that. Mm. Um, so I'm sure you're aware. We're gonna have to talk about Sam J's hair. In this, okay, yeah, sure. Um, his cornrows. Yes. He's he's known for switching it up time to time, having Ooh. his wild hair in Glass, for example, Jerry Curls in Pulp Fiction, yeah, uh, Pony, mm, Jackie Brown, Jackie oh. Brown as well. Yeah. Um, what yeah. what was his hair like in Jumper again? I'm sure if I remember him in in Jumper, I don't he, know what happened, but yeah. he had white hair that looked like. Um, it looked like an action figure, like a G.I. Joe would have. Yes, very short, I remember but it was serious lace. Yes, yeah. it was white. Yes. Sam's always kind of been the guy who would change around his hair and stuff. 
Ain't yeah. nothing wrong with that. Pop fiction no, not with a joke on that. Yeah, you know what I mean? Play your character. Play your character, exactly. Um, do you have any regretful hairstyles that you want to touch upon? For a movie once, when I was about 19 or 20, they, they wanted to make us look a bit more retro. Uh, black retro. And they thought, I think they Googled what black retro could potentially look like. That's, that's dangerous. And, and saw some soul or whatsoever. Or they gave me this European-esque kind of um, perm in my head. My hair was like only like a high top. And it just made it straight. So they could make it look like I could get like a little kind of shiny Mohican with the hair. That was that was one. I tried to style it for a couple of weeks after that. <laughs> that never worked. Was it so, Drogba esque at some point? I'm sure it wasn't. It wasn't as long as Drogba, which mm. was what which made it almost almost possible. But no. never again. So so obviously the storyline in Soul Men with the best friends breaking up and going to separate ways because they're in love with the same woman, um, which is quite awkward situation. Uh, there was a child as well involved. Yeah. Uh, have you witnessed anything similar to this or what, what, your friends believe- been in an entanglement like that? Do I support equal pay? Of course I do. <laughs> I see, I, I see. Of course I do. Yes. do okay. I, what, do I support black women? 100. Okay. <laughs> you ask me any questions like this for, man. Good comeback. Good man, do, you know what? Comeback. do you know what? I'm not even going to do that. I'll be honest, yeah. <clears throat> I always said on a podcast, if I could be honest, I'll be honest. Rags. Um, Rags, I love it, yeah. Uh, there was a friend of mine I'm not friends with anymore for, for, for the reasons I'm about to explain. Not necessarily the reasons I'm about to explain. It, mm-hmm. It's a bit worse than this at times. Uh, there was a woman that I dated um, that we were we were not compatible. Okay. But we were young. This is over 10 years ago now. Mm-hmm. We were, so I'm going to be 33. So I was 23, 22 mm-hmm. at this time, right? Not compatible. But because we started checking each other and who told me, this is, who told me, right? You know, someone said to me, someone said, and someone was her, we're not seeing anybody else right now. Why don't we just make this official? And something in my head said, that's a good idea. I don't know <laughs> what told me that. Right. Anyway, it was mm-hmm. a very, the person was not, was not in a great place in her life. I was new to the idea of a, of a proper relationship because I was mm-hmm. just coming out of my young, like, t- like teens to going into the early 20s. I'm still studying at university. You think, mm-hmm. you know, a relationship is around them times. Some get it right. Some don't. For me, mm-hmm. I wasn't getting it right, but I was going to try this one. She, we were very, two very different people. I say this as a joke, not on stage, but to people that I just talked to. I say this as a joke. We're two very different people because because I'm a Christian and, and she's a devil. But <laughs> no, I'm, okay. I'm joking. No, that's just fine. That's bad. That's noted, bad. noted. That's, yeah, that's just bad, <clears throat> right? Bad. Um, but we didn't. It was only about seven, eight months that we were together. Mm. Straight after me. My one of my closest friends who I was with all the time, his close friends. So by extension, we are okay. all one circle now. Yeah. So you're you stayed at my yard. We've all done New Year's together, where it's me at an event, and I bring you lot through. And we're all we all got one big penthouse hotel. This is where we're gonna go to the event, come back for New Year's. I find out about a month after them two mm-hmm. got together. Right, I didn't find out until maybe a few months after. Remember, I'm at university. What happens is, I'm at. This is like September, October. Come like January now, in it, right? Mm-hmm. After being at uni, September you go back to uni. Come January, my guy never went uni. He was working, mm-hmm. right? He'd come out of college and went straight to work. But I went uni. Come October, no, come January. I'm in my head like. I ain't really heard from my man for a, for a minute, you know. Mm-hmm. Let me let me go on BBM. That's how far back it was. Let me go on BBM and drop him a message. And I drop him and say, "Yo, Cuzzy, long time I we ain't linked up. What's going on? We need to we need to see each other. It's been a minute. I've been studying because this is like my I think it was my last year of uni. I think. Mm-hmm. I look at his his I look at his status in it on his BBM, and I see initials, four letters, and I was like. I know them letters. I look at the picture. In the picture, I see a picture of him hugging someone with a particular tattoo. 
I'm like, I know that tattoo. So I call up one of my family friends who also, the reason I met her was through a family friend who is also her family friend, mm-hmm. right? I call up and say, yo, is someone seeing someone? Family friend goes, yeah. And mm-hmm. I said, is, is, what's the name of the guy? Mm-hmm. Tells me the name after going, it's, it's a weird way of spelling it, but the name is, let's just go Barry. It's not Barry, yeah. but let's mm-hmm. say Barry. Yes. It's the same person. So <clears throat> I go back to BBM afterwards. I'm like, I've just seen the display pic. Don't worry about what I just said. Left it at that. I wasn't even vexed at him because you know what hell I went through. Mm. Why would you want to put yourself through that straight afterwards, right? They didn't last. It lasted for about, about a year because her thing was after that is she'd always battled with this. Mm. Her thing after that was... Um, she'd been, she was, she liked both men and women. After him, okay. she said, I'm going for women. And I'm not going to lie to you. As much as that, for me, I was like, she took the liberty and my guy never said nothing to me. I would never want to be the person that my, <laughs> that my ex says to me, I'm done with men now. <laughs> you have made me realize I'm going for women. Oh, I would never want to be the. I would never want to be the final <laughs> example. You like yeah. the, the, the straw. Imagine that being back. Yeah, like, like, that imagine being the. Thank you. Imagine being the last straw where someone goes. That's it. Done well, with that men. Is, that's quite serious, you know. That's. Oh, it's a very serious issue. I can. I can make light of it only from an aspect of if you don't make light of it, you hold on to the negatives. Yes. I can look at it and go. It happened. It is what it is. If I see him. I say hello, I say you cool, whatever, but there's no relationship anymore. I think the biggest breakdown was my guy who was my guy in the middle, yeah. he knew. And but he didn't tell you. He didn't say nothing. I respect that to a degree because it's not for him to say. The other guy needs to come to me and say something. Mm, but mm, mm. again, it was always a bit funny after that. And I still see the guy in the middle, not to check or whatsoever, but yeah, if yeah. I do bump into him, I'll have a longer combo. He's almost like family. That mm. happened, but because people are on their different pathways and so on, mm. it is what it is. I'm not vexed about it. If I see her now, um, I can still say hello. She's reached out many a time to go, I see you're doing really well, and oh, it's really nice to see you, and blah, 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 blah. And I'll be honest, I'm, I'm not trying to, I don't really want to engage in a conversation because the toxicity of that person is still there to the point that all my family friends that were her, close with her, None of them chill with her because of the way she has moved with her friends and so on and Mm. how she's dealt with people. That's separate to mine and her relationship. But because of that toxicity, I'm like, cool. I could talk about topics like that. You will never know who the person is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it's my story, I have every right to talk, but I won't bring it up. Oh, 100%. Do you see what I'm saying? In that situation, what hurts most is uh, just no one had the, the respect to tell you. Like, yeah. If you're going to do your fuckeries, like, at least just give me a heads up and then I can process it instead of finding it, out that what? way. It's just the rudeness, like... Some people, some people don't like when an ex dates your <clears> ex, <throat> when, your, when your friend dates your ex. I'm not saying I like it, but if no. a guy came up to me and said to me, look, I know you and her were together. Mm. I'm your friend. We yeah. click. Would mm. you be okay? I have to put my hands up and say, even if I feel a bit uncomfortable... Yeah. That's my issue. I'm yeah. not with her. It's mm. not down to me to say anything. Mm. Even though I may look at you and be like, rah, hold on. But I would never say no. Because one, I have yeah. no right to say no. Exactly. But at least they had the respect to come and have that conversation exactly. with you. Which then allows you to continue to have this com- uh, relationship with someone. Rather exactly. than being sneaky and sly, it stops any build of a relationship. Exactly. Or even trying to sort it out. Because it's like, if I can't trust you, to be honest with me, yeah, is there a point? Exactly. That's the thing that I've been. That's that was my only thing with it. It's just mm. you should have said you, you could have said something. And even yeah. when I messaged, you could have said something as well. Yeah, it's oh god, there's so there's so many shady people. Yeah, there was. I found out later there was a crossover as well. That was much later though. Yeah, like the last couple of months where me and her were just knocking heads and we weren't. That there was a crossover. I, I just for, think for me. Oh, but I don't, it doesn't affect me. For me, it just kind of gave me, it gave me, it confirmed. It was like a, 
So what I was seeing is what was going on. And I was okay with it in the end. It was never a problem to me. It was more just, I found that out much later. Whereas at the time I could have found out and I might have been a bit more mm. angry at my guy. But it, like, it's not, again, I look at the people and I hope that they're good in their life. In fact, one of them, he's doing okay. He's cool. He's a father. He's, um, I, I don't know his work situation, but I, he's always a graft. They all get work done. And as long mm. as he's happy. For, the, for her, I, I don't know what's going on with her, but I can't assume anything bad's going on. Or else it probably would have gone through the grapevine. As yeah. far as I'm concerned, as long as they're good and they're happy, I'm mm. happy as well. And we've all moved on. This is like 10 years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. That, oh. that would be the closest to a situation like that, if that makes sense. Yeah. Mm. That is, it's tough. And, you know, but you handled it like a G, so... That hey, is, uh, you just hey. got <laughs> to leave karma and and the universe to do its thing, really. When yeah, 100%, uh, people 100%. Behave like that, you can't you can't control people's behaviors, and mm. you can only do your part. Going back to Soul Men, um, I have so many great scenes in there. One of my favorite scenes has to be the coffin uh, scene. Oh like, yeah, really, yeah, like, yeah. Up, and it's just it's really awkward, but it's such a sweet moment. Um, do you have any? favorite scenes again it, it's, it's the it's when they first meet up again after so many years and they have their interaction um mm. it's it's bernie max it's bernie's reaction to to everything that sam's saying it's the bit when he goes um about he goes into the house he said you've got a pantry full of dog food and, and there's no dog I, I don't see a dog in here <laughs> like yeah. it's it's all the little things like that which is hilarious it's such a good like interaction that they have that has to be my favorite bit because it's full of humor you can see there's one bit where bernie wanted to he wanted to break character and laugh yeah i yeah there was a few moments like that and you there was a point (laughs) when sam jay wanted to laugh as well like i think bernie does something and sam is literally biting his lip to stop himself from laughing this is it and i think that interaction was great that was amazing yeah oh where's the line it was so genuine. Right. One of my other right. favourite scenes that's when Stifler's mom, when one of them's with Stifler's mom and the other one's with the daughter. I think uh, Bernie Mac's with Stifler's mom. I say Stifler's mm. mom because that's my only reference point to her. Like, yeah, yeah, I know who you're talking about. When, yeah, when they're, um, it's when they're in the balcony. <laughs> yeah, and then they have yeah, to, yeah, yeah, then yeah. the husband comes and it gets all crazy. And it was just like, these, these uncles, like, behave yourself. <laughs> and he had the younger one. Um, yes. <laughs> it sounds like I mean <laughs> grabbing her butt. It was it's so wrong. So wrong. it was classic. Come on, so buddy. I love the fact that she's in every black movie as the typical white woman. <laughs> I don't even understand how she's managed to <laughs> I love her character because she's the same in everything. In every she you, broke you, girls. Oh, she what was, was like the same, same character. Down to Earth. Down to Earth. Same character. She's just, oh, I love it. Word. Legally blonde. I mean, yep. yes. I'm laughing. It's in my head. Just that bit when she saw Chastity. Mom. <laughs> oh, mate. That bit. Awkward was, is that? Jeez. Um, is it awkward? Uh, could I think of a situation? Yes, that is awkward. There's no way me and my daughter, are, th- this is, no. This, that would, I'll die in that moment. I'm not saying that it's right in it. I'm not saying it at all. However, <laughs> however, however, I feel like in 2020, if I heard, if, if I heard, <laughs> no, I can't even say this story. <laughs> I was it's waiting even, for you to finish what you're about to say. It's not about I me. Feel- it's not about me. Mm-hmm. It's not about me. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to say the whole story either. I'm only going to give you a basic summary. <clears throat> I, I, have, I know people who the, who the mum is dating someone. I mean, the mum and the daughter, the age is not, is not a big gap. It's like 18, 19 years. So it's quite a young mum. The mum is dating someone mm-hmm. and the daughter is dating someone and those two are uh, those two men are only like a couple years age difference because mm-hmm. mum's dated someone that's younger, daughter's dated someone that's older. That's mm-hmm. why it's perfectly feasible that yeah, that can that, happen. Yeah, but those were two relatively older gentlemen. 
<laughs> so, so it's awkward. <laughs> I understand why you say that. So for me, I get it. Um, I get it. Yeah, I'm not going to say it's right or wrong. Everybody, no, I'm not saying it's right. Yeah. Each to their own. Hey, do what you got to do. Can I? Can I big up someone who's in the movie for you? Yes. Please uh, a friend of mine, a comedian friend, Atheon Crockett, he plays Lester the Court Jester, the, uh, the daughter's boyfriend. Oh, he's hilarious. Yes. Yeah. My name is Lester the Court Jester. Yeah. Him. Yeah. He's so funny. He's funny. He's a, he's a friend. I like Jay-Z's... Um, oh, he does impressions really, really well. So he, good. Do you know, he does, he's done so many voices on the Boondocks, right? Ah. And they're all different voices of, in, of, of, different, of different characters and stuff. And I, I met him doing a comedy tour in the UK. And he was the headliner. We became friends from them. We still stay mm. in touch. Oh, nice. And like hearing the voices, I'm, I'm a massive, <laughs> like I, you don't understand. My wake up alarm is the intro to the boondocks. My, wow. It's a mantra that I say to myself, right? My, hold on, let me, let me show you. The background of my phone is, that's Riley's. That's oh Riley. God. And then that's and then you see the other background here. That's Huey. Wow. Right? You're a fan. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm a massive Boondocks fan because of just how what well, its cultural relevance to myself yeah. and to um and to the and to the black community, I would say, in this country and particularly in America, mm. in the noughties, right? Mm. Hearing Atheon in that and then meeting him and then not going back to going what characters he played in it. For me, it was that was the thing that made me go, "Oh my God, you are, you're the guy who done the voice of." Not even I, he's been in so many movies. I've seen yeah. him stand up so many times. But for me, it was your APR. The first time I met him was like, I loved when you did this voice, that voice, that voice, and so on. Yeah. And it's because of how great he is at creating characters with voices. It's such a, it was such a good kind of connection that I I saw between the voices in it and. <coughs> meeting the fates. It was really nice. Mm. Oh, that is is such a nice story to hear. I Mm. love hearing stuff like that. So Soul Men is a lot-hearted, fun film, great for escapism. If you had to direct someone to YouTube to watch a clip, to entice them to watch the movie, what clip would it be and why? It'd be the clip. It'd be the five-minute clip of them doing the... when they they first meet up after many, many years. Or it would be (laughs) the interaction between them when they sing with the daughter for the first time mm. and they do the song, which is, um, it's a slower song. I do I'll like that scene with the daughter. That's quite sweet. It's really nice. And it's, it's the clip just before that when they see Isaac Hayes. Yeah. Uh, but when, when Millie Jackson was there and she slapped him across his face. Yeah. Mm. That interaction, I would say that would give you a good indication as to what kind of humour you're going to get in the movie. And mm. if you like Bernie, if you like Sam, it would be those ones that I show. Yeah, that's really yeah. funny because it's exactly the same scene that I would have picked because I feel like at that moment, you're in a nice flow of the movie. Like yeah. the chemistry is nice. You get introduction of the, the daughter. Um, the, the singing is nice and the crowd is enjoying themselves. Like it's yeah, a yeah. really like joyous moment. Mm. Um, so I really, I would probably recommend that scene out of all of them because the other one sometimes can be it's too much it will give too much away you don't want to give yeah, too yeah, much yeah, yeah, yeah. 100% I get what you mean yeah. when trainers do that you have hey. been an absolute superstar I laughed and frowned at some of the things <laughs> that you have said and uh, yeah it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show and thank I wish you. you absolute best of luck and I hope your 2021 is amazing thank you very much I really appreciate that thank you <laughs>